Alex asked a question to me via messenger earlier this morning. What I'd love to know even more is your methodology of how you get to a point at your last, of how you got to a point at your last sales job to only cold call 10 customers a month because most prospects were calling you. My overall methodology is quality over quantity. I'd rather spend three times as much time bringing on a client that makes me five figures a year than taking the time to bring on clients that might make me a few hundred bucks or a couple of thousand dollars a year. What I mean by that is, is what I did was similar to what you do further down in your question. You state that um, I still have a day job selling a long cycle product to, ex to executive level people at mid to large companies. Yeah, the stuff that we sold was credit information and credit insurance, and those were on contracts. So we might talk to somebody today who's got a contract for the next 30 months because they signed up six months ago. Most of the time it was our contract is up in six months or our contract is up in eight months. I spent a lot of time building strategic partnerships with higher quality clients. It's the referral business game, right? If I'm doing amazing work for a guy who owns a company that does $50 million, cool. His circle of friends and the people that he interacts with are probably at that level. If I do amazing work for somebody who does $7 billion a year, they don't own that company. I'm dealing with finance people. They travel in much different circles. It takes longer to build that relationship. It takes longer to get that relationship going. But that's how I did it. I spent probably half my time building relationships with higher quality, higher paying clients, right? That's, that was my methodology that on how I did that. A couple of birds with one stone. If I take half my time and go after just anybody I can get to close, but I take the other half of my time and go after whales, all I need to do is land one whale. It takes a little bit of time, a little more effort in the meantime of money because I'm not bringing on all the clients that I can, but that whale that I bring in, they're connected, right? All I need to do is get an opportunity. If I know my shit and the company that I work for is any good, all I need is an opportunity. Let me show them that not only does our company do the thing better, faster, more effective, more efficient, but I as managing their account, because I'm not just the sales guy, I'm going to I'm going to take care of that account, especially if it's a big client. I'm going to take care of them in ways that the people previous to me didn't. Here's some of my methodology. The industry that I worked in, we sold finance services. Okay. Well, what could I do to help out my clients? I could do things like keeping them in the know by, by um, curating information that's pertinent to their industry. I did a lot of stuff in oil and gas. I did a lot of stuff in fire protection. I did a lot of stuff in, in big, 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 like construction, concrete, um, steel, right? I worked with companies that did that shit. Well, if I brought on a client and their parent company was carriers, but they by themselves did seven billion dollars a year and they were in the fire protection industry what are some things that i can help my client with that the people before me never would have even thought of doing well compliance and regulation and shows that are coming up and connecting them to other big ass suppliers that don't happen to use their stuff or carry their stuff right creative things my methodology was this I would spend whatever amount of time it took to land the bigger client and I would do way more and a way better job of making them look like rock stars in their own world than anybody previous to me had. Does that take time and effort? Yeah, it does. Does that help me become totally fucking invaluable? Yep. As long as, as, long as me managing their account, I take care of all their stuff. And the company that I work for does a really good job at what we're actually providing them. Then the icing on the cake is all of the extras that I do, right? 
there's too many variables to go into, but fire protection, just as an, as an example, the company that I worked for was global company that they are was global. So I had connections with other companies globally because they were our clients who could use the product and the service that this client of mine had. I made introductions. I went first, right? I didn't just ask them, Hey, you got a referral. Hey, who do you know? What I did was, is I would show up with a list, show up on the phone. I would show up with a list of between three and four, maybe five companies that they could totally approach and I would give them the name of the people that they needed to contact, the phone number, who they were currently using, and I would make an introduction on their behalf if they were interested. Most cases, that wasn't, that wasn't done or handled by the finance person that I was dealing with, but they, on their level, peer within the company, the sales manager for whatever region that was globally. Another one of the ways that I did that was Just because we sold financial services didn't mean I wasn't in the know of other things going on in the industry, right? I had clients in oil and gas. I had clients in oil and gas that were on the service side, field services side, and I had clients that were on the hauling side. Well, if these guys had a problem with their supplier and I had a good client that did the thing that they were having a problem with, I could connect them really quickly. And I became the go-to guy in that industry for all my clients. Hey, who do you know that does this? We have an issue and we need to get it, blah, 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 blah. And they're telling us next week. I make a phone call or two. Guess what? It's handled tomorrow at 8 a.m. Those are the kind of things that I did methodology-wise to make it to where I only had to call some whales. Another thing that I did was... um, I treated my clients differently than they expected to be treated. I told them the truth, the hard truth, before they came to me with a problem or a fire, right? A lot of people that sell to executives, mid-level companies will just kind of let things go, you know, and hopefully whatever, it's cool. No, 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 no. Nope. Bring it the fuck up. Here's, Here's another thing that I did. Just because I'm dealing with the finance people within those companies doesn't mean that the finance people within those companies are the only people I can have impact on. This kind of plays into the prospecting piece. If I was trying to get the finance person to take a phone call, they know it's me. They're telling Betty to send me to voicemail or they're telling the whoever to you know take a message. I would then call up the sales manager and I would have a very, very clear, very direct conversation. Hey man, my name's Landon. I work for so-and-so. I am trying to connect with your finance guy. I'm not looking for you to connect me. Let me go about it a different way. There are techniques and strategies that I, as a sales guy use with my highest end clients. And we're talking well into the fortune 100. I had several in the fortune 10 when I was doing it. And I'd like to share this information with you because it will benefit you. It'll benefit your people and it'll benefit your company. And hopefully if I do enough of a good job with you and for your company, that maybe you'll go have a conversation with Bob and say, Hey man, you know, this guy's been trying to get a hold of you for 17 months and he's left you voice messages. Do you know who he is? He sent emails. Da, 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 da. I just spent the last four weeks with him, like 30 minutes a week. And he gave me a bunch of strategies and techniques and stuff that we've used to fucking knock it out of the park. You really ought to take 30 minutes to have a phone call with this guy. I did that several times and I got a phone call back every one of those times. Another thing that I did on a fairly regular basis methodology wise was if I was trying to get Bob on the phone, or if I was trying to get Bob to upgrade to a service that I knew that was going to benefit him better than what they were getting. Okay. Two very similar things. The client needs to take a step, right? For me to be able to work with the client, they've got to take the step and take my phone call and have a conversation, right? Or have the conversation. We've had conversations. We need to have the conversation or the client is already a client and they are using our C tier program, but they need to be using our A tier 
program and they are cost minded and not ROI minded and I need to get their attention. Every once in a while, a four or $500 pair of tickets to the opera for Bob's wife and him or a 200 and some dollar bottle of scotch or see where I'm going. This is about proving that you're willing to do what it takes to do the thing. Another methodology. Um, but at the end of the day, what you're asking me is, is how did I get it to where I was only making 10 phone calls a month? You can go spend two hours a day doing all of your prospecting and six or seven or eight hours a day reaching out, connecting, doing the cold approach thing and or you know, following up with people that you've called 30 times or you can spend four or five hours doing all of the research. You can spend three or four hours doing all the follow-up and then one day a month, you can strategically on a specific day, I was dealing with finance people. You never call them at the beginning of the month or the end of the month. Guess what the best day of the month to call those people is? The very beginning of the third week, not on a Monday though. Tuesday, right? I understood my people so well that I never stepped on their toes and never caused them an issue and never caused them a problem. When I did show up, oh boy, did I have goodies, right? Not just in, I went and bought a bunch of shit for them, but I had goodies. I had information that made them look like a rock star, not only within their organization, but across their industry. I had information that saved their asses in many cases. I had connections to other people that they could then go into a board meeting, right? We're talking, you know, fortune 100, fortune 500 CFOs and finance directors could go into a board meeting and say, one of my guys has a connection with Home Depot and Home Depot carries our competitor's brand and he can get our sales manager a full on hour long conversation. We've been struggling with that for the last six months. He can get us that conversation. Do you have any idea the impact that has on somebody's career? Do you have any idea on the impact that has on somebody's necessity to keep me the fuck around? Right. Everybody's going that way. Go that way. At the end of the day, what I did was I gave my clients stuff that other people weren't willing to give them, weren't willing to do for them. And I did it by building strategic partnerships. Instead of going and cold calling 100 or 200 people, I went and focused my attention on 10 people, right? I go get the info on 100 or 200 people, but instead of calling them just randomly out of the blue, I would vet them down all the way through my process and I would get it down to the 10 people that I'm going to call. I told Robert to go about it a different way. He needed to understand the, the conversation. At this point, by the time I was doing this, I was three years, four years into my process. I already knew the conversation. I didn't need to relearn it. I knew it. Well, I would go get 100 leads that do this at this revenue level across the country. And then I would get that down to the handful of people that I was actually going to call. I would research who they are. I would research what they do, who they hang out with, what their local news in their town says about them, right? The people I'm dealing with, I was dealing with finance people and many of them made millions of dollars a year, right? As a finance person, director of finance, CFO of a fortune 10, fortune 25, they're making seven figures in almost all cases, right? So those are the people that I was going after. They are a big person. They're a big person in their town. There's lots of information on them in their town. See where I'm going with this? Research, market research. I knew who I wanted and I went about figuring out how to get in front of them differently because I was more dedicated than anybody else in my industry. I almost, I would say that, 98% of everybody else in my industry, I was more dedicated than when it came to figuring out how to get a conversation. And then once I had a conversation, I never used all those tools in my tool belt. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this because I only had to do that for two or three people before word spread that Landon's doing this. I'm, I got that from 
my my credit guy. What? What the hell are you talking about? You got that from your credit guy. Yeah, right? Nuts, huh? And then they start calling me. That's how you do it. How does this approach work when working with entrepreneurs and small business owners? It works the same way, okay? So an entrepreneur or a small business owner has 400 spinning plates. They are buried, right? They're wearing 19 different hats. Help them take some of that shit off of their plate and you don't want to do the menial tasks. You don't want to handle the minutia for them. You want to make their life easier, better, faster at a higher impact level. That's how you do it. Peace out, Cub Scouts.